welcome <laughs> to the van. Thanks. How long have you been here in LA? Do you live in LA? For yeah, time? we're 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 kind of uh, we were in LA for about twelve years, and then we bought this place in New Mexico, so we moved there, and it was during the pandemic, mm -hmm. so it was pretty cool. And then um, we were missing LA a little bit, and also my daughter, we wanted her to attend the French school. So there's not many cities with international schools, so LA is one of them. So we just decided to come back here. We mm -hmm. kept New Mexico, of course, but um, we might not stay here for long. We're already yeah. already thinking of the next move. So yeah, we'll, well, it's a beautiful place here. Yeah, it's pretty cool. The neighborhood. Yeah, it's, it's nice. Have you been up to the Griffith Observatory? Yeah, of course. I still yeah. have never been. <laughs> well, From California. You're gonna have to do that this <laughs> afternoon, maybe. <laughs> you can walk there in two minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I'd like to thank you for coming on the pod today. Sweet. Uh, for people who don't know, you're just, you've been inspiring to me for a long time. Even as a non-painter myself, mm -hmm. as, a, as an artist doing filmmaking and things, uh, following your work for a few years now, it's just been so inspiring to see what you can do with your medium of art of painting. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd love to just get right into it and, and maybe give uh, the listeners who don't know who you are yet uh, <laughs> a backstory of kind of your story into uh, painting, but also what inspired you to get into painting and then more specifically you know, the, the Western genre down the line as well. Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, it's like, uh, it's funny because as we talk, I was just publishing on my Instagram. Um, I was trying to post that video for so long. Like um, I did a presentation during my show about three weeks ago. Um, and so we recorded the presentation because it was like, I'm talking about my artistic journey from like childhood to like you know now and uh so i'm publishing it now so it'll be interesting for people to look at that because it, it's kind of detailed um but yeah pretty much i i i discovered um the american west when i was about 15. i came here for a trip um with my uncle and uh discovered the, the american west and i was not, not painting or anything at the time i was just a teenager <laughs> and uh i started and painting later on in art school and um and same i was in europe i mean i was in paris so i didn't i was not really exposed to you know western painting and all that and so um it came later on um when i was living in america and um was directing music video for a living um and looking for new inspiration all the time and and the music video industry were kind of like in decline so i randomly stumbled onto um, western art in oklahoma city at the uh, hall of fame um the cowboy museum and um kind of like get struck by lightning there uh, i was really like a lot of like what i was doing in my life at the time all the trips i was always always in arizona and spent a lot of time on the back roads of texas and all and and so but i was always like pretty much taking photos, like my medium was more photography and I was I, I was using old cameras and stuff like that. And, but then I was suddenly seeing like something even even more like um, old school and like the, the art, um, like very classical approach of the American West and history of America and all that. I was like, wow, this is for me. Um, and yeah, I, all of a sudden I broke back all my you know painting skills and stuff that I learned in art school and I just t took a chance at it, like, you know, kind of like cut expenses and moved back to Arizona to my mother-in-law's house and just started to paint. And that was uh, 2014. So, so you, it's been almost 10 years now. Wow. It's fast. <laughs> yeah, it goes crazy. by so fast. <gasps> but you'd had this formal training and then, uh, you know, when you get inspired by seeing these places mm -hmm. uh, and this way of life here in, in, in the West and in, in the United States, what what about it made you inspired to go into the medium of paint rather than the photograph? Mm. Well, painting is uh, kind of always been my dream to like, um, yeah, just be a painter. Like this was kind of a like a beautiful idea. Um, but I was always imagining myself being old in in the south of France, you know, and painting flowers. And I, I didn't know exactly what it would mean to be a painter. So. As I was in my early 30s, you know, being a director was more fun and, you know, I, I like to do music videos and meet people and film people. It was a lot of fun, but then all of a sudden I, I the me, the idea of, of the painting was always in my head and will come back in. 
but I didn't have the subject matter that was like exciting me more than that. So discovering Western painting, all of a sudden there was a there was a more captivating subject, something that is almost like a, a mythology on its own, um, with a narrative that that is endless um, and that can transport us further than just you know somebody on a horseback. You know, there's, there's a story behind it that is pretty deep. And um, yeah, I think everybody in the world, I mean, especially here, has a little cowboy in his heart. Oh. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like well, the girls, the boys, everybody has, you know, somewhere we have that fantasy uh, from childhood. And because it's a very romantic idea, um, you know, to ride the ranch, you know, on a horse and being in the element. And, um, you know, I've done a few uh, horseback trips where. I realized like how important it is to actually experience that, you know, it doesn't have to be your life every day, but it's pretty much like uh, something I would, I would uh, recommend to everybody to at least try to take a back trip, back road, um, how do you say, back country trip, you know, on horseback for a few days, just kind of see what it's up, you know, where it does you, yeah. it's pretty good. It's like a simple way of living. And <laughs> yeah. And just like riding a horse, it's so slow, you know, mm -hmm. like, so it just gives you like time to contemplate banking. Yeah. It's not like driving on our cars. Yeah, for sure. It's definitely <laughs> a different you know, way of life. miles an hour everywhere. Getting back to the roots of like humans before cars and technology yeah. and all that too. Yeah. I grew up in the Redwoods up north near Santa Cruz. Mm -hmm. if you've been there. Yep. And, uh, but again, I, I, I love like your imagery obviously. And then just being in those southwestern places my mm -hmm. younger sister goes to arizona state and then actually when i picked up this van i spent an evening i think i noticed in an article that you had spent some time too in kingman arizona oh yeah yeah so i love i pulled off and that was like my second night in this van waking up to these vast landscapes did you pull in coyote pass do you know that place that sounds familiar yeah that was in 2020 you but, can yeah. actually pull there and sleep there probably, yeah. probably it's called coyote that. pass and you have this giant vista of like just like rocks and yes. yeah that's probably where you pull i got up on top of one of them yeah it was like easy to walk up to the exactly top so that's it it's called coyote top. pass probably was that yeah, yeah i love it though <laughs> so when you start getting into this art though and and you're able to paint and it's it's so amazing obviously the talent it's not the first time you've heard that i'm sure but when was the first realization for you that you thought, wow, I can actually do this and sustain myself. Mm -hmm. And I also love it. So this is like a best of. No, exactly. Um, yeah, I've also, I mean, in art school, I, when I started to paint and draw and um, I, I was, I was obviously in, in um, the top three or four of my class. And I, I early on could tell that I had something going on, but I was far to be, uh, good, I think, but uh, you know, as 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 better than others, um, and so I kept pushing this, but then I I stopped for for a while. So I was in a band also, so it was like a lot. Um, I was doing like kind of the imagery of my band. Um, that's pretty much the only time I was really drawing. Um, I was also worked for animation movies and stuff. But um, anyway, I I put it aside for a while, and um, when I started the paint um, western I was looking around and seeing what was going on in this um, I don't know I call it an industry but it is an industry like mm -hmm. it's his own market and I could tell that there was something I could do that would be different um, I had I had a different background and pretty much all of the painters that were around at the time and so yeah I had a good, good feeling like you know like if, if you're a fighter and, you know, you see some guys fighting, like, I think I can go, you know, yeah. <laughs> I got my chance. I can, I can do it. So I was kind of the same. I was like, I think I, I can try and, uh, and see what happened. Um, so yeah, I, I, I gave it a shot and start posting my stuff on, on an Instagram account that I started back then, 2014, same. And and I got a lot of good feedbacks very quick. So um, that's very encouraging. And that was also a very cool thing. Um, about social media and 
being a, an artist, you back in the days before social media, it's pretty lonely, um, you know, to paint or draw like a lot, a lot of hours alone. And, and when you finish something, nobody cares. The cool thing with social media is you can share. And that's like a primal thing, very important thing to, um, yeah, kind of keep going because it's kind of lifting your heart, you know, when, you, you know, I got good feedback. Even if I, when I started, I had like, you know, 30 followers, 100 followers. But it was enough to like, you know, a few friends that I knew would be like, oh man, that's awesome. Then you do another one and blah, blah, blah. So that's cool. That's amazing. Yeah. I, I How did people before Instagram get their art out? I mean. It was a totally different world. Yeah. It was way harder, like way harder. So galleries were obviously way more preeminent and, and they had mm -hmm. like a way bigger role than they do now. Um. I think the the whole gallery world has been shaken by by social media exactly the same as labels with music back when the internet arrived and you could start sharing music on on the internet before um before it was you know the the labels were the almighty and then they became i mean most of artists now don't even have labels because they don't need it mm. so it's pretty much the same with painters mm. like I, we don't really need galleries we, we work with them because it's also nice to have other people working with you and taking care of things but at the end of the day we don't really need them anymore if you have an, enough of an audience and you know collectors are out there people are just in a straight relationship with with collectors so anyway um what was i saying uh, we were talking about what, how people shared art before Instagram. Yes, exactly. Well, so yeah, that's it. I'm just saying like you, you used to need really a gallery to like show mm -hmm. your work. Yeah. And it was very local because, yeah. you know, galleries couldn't even, oh, you were, you know, in a very big gallery in New York that had like a very big reach. But apart from that, um, it was probably way harder. Yeah. And so you'd have a gallery in Scottsdale and that would be just Arizona people seeing your stuff or you'll have a gallery in Jackson Hole and it would be just people from Wyoming now it's just everywhere in the world the world sees instant, your stuff yeah. instant yeah. yeah and you're and that's gotta be so cool that you're able to connect with people who maybe back then oh. someone in painting here in California today yeah someone in Europe is not going to see it for no, a little ever. bit or never or never yeah. <laughs> I know yeah. no it's pretty amazing I heard you mentioning in another interview because uh, I've done my research, of course. Because cool. uh, I, I loved your painting, but I, I, I just I love this is why I love this format is getting to talk with people behind the art. Um, and I heard you mention something about how uh, your your work in the band, um, you you like to be like social versus. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you mentioned maybe sometimes people who paint or draw or something they're maybe a bit more um, not as. Uh, What's the word? Introverted, I yeah, guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so for you, that's got to be great then to be able to, to connect with people all yeah. over. And then it, it's got to be exciting too then at at a show where you mm -hmm. get to actually see face to face. Still, so you get best of both worlds mm -hmm. then. So uh, what's the, the best part about connecting with people for you? What's the best feedback that you can get that makes you feel like fulfilled to be mm -hmm. doing what you're doing rather than you seeing something you've done yeah. in a room by yourself yeah well um i mean when you you know you, first of all i'm trying to read all the messages people send me when i get them i read them right sometimes don't answer just put a heart to kind of acknowledge that i read it or i answer it depends the time of the day if i have you know 20 minutes in front of me I, i'll just answer um because it's important you like you know people writing to you they they you know, they put their time to it. So you wanna be respectful and answer. Um, so I can still do it, I do it. But then, yeah, like talking to people, you can hear their, the feelings they have, you know. First of all, you know, when they purchase one of your print or they're like, you know, they have it at home, they, it's important for them, you know, it's it's in my kid's room, it's it's above our chimney, you know, we had it framed by our brother. Like, it's like, there's always a story it would tell you like yeah it's amazing it's like a song like you know when i was in a band people were like oh you know we made love for the first time on that song and you know so it's so important or you know this song reminded forever our relationships so you're like wow it's my song and those people you know uh 
have that you know imprinted in their story and so it happens to be the same with painting somehow where people are like yeah this painting reminds me of my grandfather or you know uh, that ride i had with my dad and he passed away and somebody one day told me that you know his the, so the whole time his dad was in final phase of cancer they were in the room and there was that painting with the grand canyon it was his dad's favorite place and they've been talking about the grand canyon for my painting when the dad passed away hand in hand it's like it's amazing so it goes way further than just the painting and um for people who you know either don't think they have time or they don't want to you know really engage too much with their audience they're missing that part it's like Mm -hmm. because yeah it's it's very hard um it's warming for for the heart to like hear all those stories in and it makes me keep want to (laughs) paint so art goes well beyond just the act of creating something beautiful it's the human story of course and the emotions you know like people have emotions and i've seen people at the show you know like three weeks ago all the people who came there was so many people who came to see the paintings in the flesh and you know some girls were crying and it's like it's just pretty incredible like to feel that um, a work of art can bring so many emotions. Yeah. And again, because I think there is a lot more attached to it um, than just a painting. And yeah. um, and it's important to communicate um, as we are alive. I'm saying like, you know, because, you know, we like some painters that are dead and we're never going to know what they... We have that chance now to uh, give more in our lifetime and being more heard, being more recorded. Uh, exchanging with people um, and that's important I think for whatever remains of the work we're doing now in the future it's cool to like share as much as we can as we're here um, so people understand more your work and you know so yeah that's a great point like this conversation here will be posted and then yeah. <laughs> be on the internet well past our time yeah exactly and I mean currently right now sitting here it's like so awesome to hear your passion and then to get to hear people's yeah. reaction yeah. and how you get to connect over that. Mm-hmm. But let's talk about then your own connection with the art too, whether that is when you are, you know, maybe beyond when you're out on a plane somewhere getting inspired, but when you actually sit down and you begin to put the brush mm-hmm. down, what are you experiencing what is that process like for you Mm -hmm. well it's always a kind of a personal ritual and it you know it it, i let it sit um i know i'm moving forward in different images in my head so that that takes place so first of all i shoot photography you know that's how i work i go places and i take photos and then um I go back to my home, I look at the photos and I always put things together. It's never like the one photo I'm going to paint. It's it's always a def- different background, different skies, different elements. Oh, like a compilation. Yeah, right? I compose okay. a lot to make the best image possible because, um, you know, that's the fun part with painting. Um, and so now there's even AI who can propose like different background if you want, you know, some people playing with that already. And so that's kind of cool, but I need the, the human experience. Like it's important for me, especially if I, I, I paint, you know, um, real people kind of know, I kind of like to know them cause that's inspiring a lot. Mm. Like to me, there are stories, you know, like then the titles of paintings and all that usually has a connection with what I've experienced with those people, you know, because I, you know, go to Arizona, I go shoot those cowboys and I hear them talk and I, you know, I hear about their life and stuff. And so that gives me ideas, you know, for a narrative. Um, so that's the, the starting point. And then I just, uh, you know, check the pictures on the computer and, and sketch from it, try to see, usually I, there's a couple of photos that stands out. And I already know because I was on the shoot and I was behind the camera. And as I was shooting, I, I remember, you know, magical moments. And sometimes, oh yeah, there was that picture. So I look at it. If it's good, I sketch it. And if it passes the test of the sketch, then I I, um, 
I start imagining painting. So then it's like, oh, what sky would be good? And then I have like pictures of skies I've been taking, you know, so many. And then so I just compose. And I, I kind of have like about, you know, 20, 30 images like that that are in my head, that are in the computer that I go back to. And then one day it's like, okay, I, p I pick this one. This is happening. This one is, is ready in my head. So I, I usually take the the, you know, the image and I, I transfer it on the canvas and then I start painting. Um, and it's just slow. I have, I have a day or two where I start, you know, tracing stuff, making sure things is in place, putting values. And then slowly it's building. And then I spend three weeks, usually about three weeks with the painting and to make it, you know, come to life. So, yeah. So you're in the studio. Are you listening to music? Or is it quiet? What? I am listening to a lot of audiobooks. Yeah. That's okay. my life is is stories and audiobooks. Got it. Which I discovered about, you know, four, probably like five years ago. Because I was listening to music before, mm -hmm. like a lot. And then it was like, it became like kind of difficult because music you constantly have. I, there's some music I don't like. So I like you have to like make sure you have playlists and then it's like, it takes so long. Mm -hmm. Um I can't just play some like random playlist. Uh, I can't. So I was starting to listen to audiobooks, um, and then I I was like, it's crazy. I, there is so much out there, and I would never read those books, you know, at my bedside in the night. Like, this is never gonna happen. I don't have time. I fall asleep. So I have pretty much eight hours a day where I can listen to stuff. So I end up like. I don't know how many books I heard, but it's like, it's crazy and it keeps going. So that that's kind of also brings a parallel story to my story because each painting is related to a book somehow. Cause mm -hmm. I usually, you know, books are like 10, 20, 30 hours. So I usually listen to one or two books during one painting. Uh, and so it's, it's cool. Cause some, sometimes it's like, I see a painting and it reminds me of the book. So that's cool. <laughs> that's what I was going to ask, actually, uh -huh. because I make playlists on Spotify based off of months and then I, you know, library those. Yeah, and yeah. then I can look back at February 2018 yeah. and listen to a song and know where I was. Oh, uh, yeah. So yeah. I love that. That's, this is cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's such a cool thing. I don't I mean. even, I, I should take more notes of it because I feel like I don't. And so I would mm -hmm. not remember everything, but yeah. sometimes I do. So you're referencing mm -hmm. photographs and things like during the process, right? Mm -hmm. Uh how i mean are you able to just know exactly what's going to go down and then just make it happen or in the process are you kind of improvising with your strokes and things like how much is it before you create something you know exactly what it's going to look yeah. like yeah 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 I, I try to kind of like make sure the path is completely paved before i go on the canvas mm -hmm. because the stress of not going where it's headed, I can't afford. Mm. Like, you know, I'm, I'm not like, the idea of a painter in front of a white canvas and start doing things that's like in the movies or I don't think, it, I mean, some people maybe do that, but I really hit the canvas with a strong like plan and, and everything is, I'm, it's pretty much to me, the phase of painting is execution. Mm -hmm. I'm executing an idea that's like and I've, the whole work of inspiration is already done yeah. before i hit the canvas and of course the, the painting brings some kind of magic to it because there's you know the texture and and the rendering and all but but the idea is already there mm -hmm. it's 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 like when you go shoot a movie you don't go without a script sure and to me this is the same thing like you know my whole work before the canvas is the script mm -hmm. you know casting the actors and all and then when I paint is the is the shoot yeah. is the shooting so yeah that's a good point and and you have this whole library of work to point at you know going in that you're going to be able to accomplish what you set out to accomplish yeah I guess for me as like a non painter looking at it it's so amazing seeing the detail in the mm -hmm. clouds it's like unfathomable to think that you know that someone could do it it's yeah. just amazing and so it's obviously not by mistake that you're able to create something and yeah. then do something else following that is also mm -hmm. very good yeah um when do you know that it's complete oh that seems done yeah that's it i mean it's again it's a personal decision um and i think that deadlines kind of decide when it's over um but um uh, yeah, there's a point where I feel like things, uh, you feel it, mm. you know, and there's, 
I, you always, I'm always like, oh, I could, of course, I could go more on that. I can come back on that, but do I need it? Is he gonna change something? Probably not. So I feel like, you know, with experience that, you know, the face is, is good like that. And what is it gonna change if I spend another day? Like, and you might actually make it worse. Mm. And it's it's good, and it could become really amazing, but it can also start becoming too much. And it's like, eh, maybe there's that like subtle point where it's it's fine. And it's a very fine line, but you know it. It's a feeling that I think you know when when you are yeah. the artist. I think if you're in the middle of a, a piece, even do you ever just stand back and contemplate? You know, what am I feeling about this? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, you do it all the time, nonstop as you go. And um, I'm I'm doing a painting of a portrait of my wife right now. I'm, I'm, it's something I, I wanted to do for a long time and never had time because I'm always on like, you know, shows and stuff. So since the show was so great, I'm, I'm able to kind of slow down a little bit right now and do personal things. So it's very fascinating because it's different than my usual stuff and I'm using different techniques that I usually use. So it's kind of cool too. But yeah, every minute I'm like stepping back, looking at it, yeah. keep going. That's actually beat me to it. I was gonna ask, are you ever painting other things that you don't share? It's like personal that mm -hmm. you just like to have. Into well, I, I, I haven't I haven't in a long time because you know, everything I do is, is shows and, and so I'm, I'm gonna, yeah, I think in the next six months, I'm gonna, there's gonna be a few things that are a little different. Mm -hmm. um, but I also have a lot more ideas for, you know, more Western stuff as well. And mm -hmm. there's maybe some European subject, uh, we'll see. Can we talk about just the detail too, that you're able to create these images of, of horses? Mm -hmm. I mean, I could draw a horse, but you might know it's a horse, but maybe not. It's that bad. <laughs> but uh, it must take just hours upon hours. You know, people say it's 10,000 hours to become an expert at things, but I'm sure you've spent a lot more than 10,000 mm -hmm. hours painting. How do you even take on drawing a horse with so many details of the muscles and then like clouds too? It's, it's mm -hmm. just so, it's almost photographic in a way because you're able to do something that is artistic like you know it's a painting but at the same time you it's it is what it is mm -hmm, too mm -hmm. well it, i'm trying to um also you know i see some i saw this girl i forgot her name um she's doing like super realistic pencil mm -hmm. stuff and it's like a, it's crazy like the way she's doing it she's doing western stuff and horses it's like way more realistic than what i do but uh to me i prefer to try to actually keep like a pentally thing and even though you think that when you look at my painting it's very small it looks like it's photo mm -hmm. but when you see my paintings in person it's not at all like you can actually see the brush and you know see that it's painted um the key is to have your colors right like because that's the most important is like the values and colors needs to be right so your eye understand and recognize what it is and the shapes of course so uh that's why I always say start, you know, how to draw. And, you know, when you understand how to draw, then you can start painting. But you, you can't paint without knowing how to draw because it's got to be flat. Mm. So, um, yeah, again, that's just, uh, you know, by doing it over and over. And yeah. uh, details is just, uh, it's just the techniques, you know, it's just skills. You you still don't understand how to build stuff. Mm. And, and, you know, you'd, you'd be surprised when I studied art school and we were like, you know, we had to like draw a shoe and it was like first year and we had to bring a shoe and start at the beginning you're like how the fuck am i gonna do that but then you actually end up doing it you know you're looking at it and then you're like okay this is brown and it becomes a little purple on the light and then and then you just just do it so it's you know it's, it's like everything like my friend this morning was like i just built a, a cabin with my dad you know in in oregon and and just i'm like how the fuck do you do that mm. but he's like well you start doing it and you do it you know, it's, it's like yeah. pretty much everything. So that's what I think about. Yeah, when I see your paintings or yeah. other great artists, it's yeah. like how. Yeah, how? But then you know, maybe yeah. if you were studying and trying, maybe right. you'll you start understanding them more. Right. And uh, yeah, it's just, just a lot of work. There was a time when I was doing like fun for fun, like hobby line drawings and things. Mm -hmm. I was working at this Christian camp up in the Santa Cruz Mountains, and uh, 
I, I realized if you sit there and you actually, you know, look at the lines on the wall or something, like you can see the angle they're at and you can actually then put it to paper mm -hmm. and, and you actually can kind of do it rather than if you were just trying to like go from your memory or yeah, something. Yeah, so yeah. No, no, I realized you if you take, if I were to take the time, but I think the other thing is a, is a passion too. Yeah, of course. So for you, is your passion for this genre of art, this medium art, does it stay consistent? Does it kind of, you know? No, it's 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 really consistent. Like, mm -hmm. I'm always excited about painting. Yeah, like, always, always, always. Like, it's it's really the thing that never dies. Uh, mm. It's like somebody that likes to watch football and they're never gonna get you know bored with it. Yeah, it's the same thing. Like, I just I'm never bored with painting. Like, and and seeing new paintings, like. I get so excited s discovering a painting from a painter that I like that I didn't know, or even seeing paintings that I like over and over to try to understand. There's, I don't know what it is, but that that passion for it really started when I was in art school and, and never left me. So that that I think that's the fuel. Like if you don't have that, it's not gonna work. But yeah. uh, so far, I have it. <laughs> that's a great point. And I said before I. I do video things and you know fly the drone and shoot rock climbers and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And again, I, I before going into university, I knew that I had a passion for that. And since then it's grown. So yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I think sometimes people don't necessarily find that or they find it later in life. Do you have any advice for people who are trying to find what makes their heart tick? Mm -hmm. What makes them mm -hmm. excited mm -hmm. about life? Like painting is for you? Yeah, it's, uh, I think everything is kind of tied together. Like you have to also try to know yourself and try to work on yourself um, in order to find what is it that you actually like. Because, and I see a lot of people that have everything on their feet but they don't look there they just go they look further and they don't that's never they're never gonna catch it because it's too far and i just want to tell them just you know bend over and grab this because mm -hmm. this is you and it's around your feet and but it, you, it takes a lot of like introspection and try to understand your path and your life to kind of accept also who you are and, and what what is your capacity mm -hmm. Because, you know, not everybody is capable of everything. I mean, we can do mm -hmm. a lot, but we've also been programmed by our, you know, upbringing and who were your parents, who was your life path. And so some people are wired to do that, some for that. And so it's important in life to somehow early on have the maturity to understand, you know, what is at your reach and i'm not saying you know some dreams are unreachable but you can also make your own dreams you know like make your own dreams or your dreams that you can make happen because other people dreams are maybe not reachable for you because they're they're their their dreams yeah and there's dreams that are very commercials and very exciting for everybody and and we see them all day you know oh this guy's doing that i don't want to do that yeah but you know, you don't know the path of this guy. Maybe for him, it was easy to do that. But for you, you might waste your life trying to get there when maybe this is more for you. And, um, you know, I think, but that takes a lot of um, of, of self um, uh, introspection. Yeah. To have the, the wiseness of yeah. realizing, you know, what am I here for? You know, what is my contribution to this whole thing? Um, and where's my personal path? Because that's also super hard. Mm -hmm. And it takes a long time to you know, like accept your own road and what is my road and, and not somebody else. That's a great point. Yeah. And something that is dawning on me right now as we speak and something that I've heard from a lot of people or a feeling that I've got as I've done more van casts is that it's such a common theme that people who excel in their field as they tell me their stories, it was never with the original intention to make money. Mm -hmm. It was never with the original intention to be famous or to have these other other worldly possessions mm -hmm. or anything. Mm -hmm. It was something that they felt passionate about. Mm -hmm. And then I think that passion comes through in what they do and it connects with people and that's when they inspire people and then, the, yeah, they get notoriety and things. But I think that's a really good point. If, if you're trying to go for something that 
maybe you had like a fleeting idea because you saw someone do something cool. You have to really be self-aware and say, yeah. is this what I want yeah. to chase? Uh, yeah. And it's, it's funny because, I mean, humans are, are mimicking creatures. Like it's just the way it is. And and I, I see it already, you know, all the messages I received of guys are like, oh, you know, you really inspire me in painting Western. And I said, I want to, you know, try to make Western painting or I'm like, and I already, I already know it's not going to work mm. again, because it's just, you know, it's like, oh, they're looking at the, the prices and oh, this guy's making money with the paintings. I want to do that too. Yeah. But when I started, I was not. And like you said, I was, I didn't, didn't even think about it. I was like, I need to do something I like, and then maybe I'll make money with it. You know, because I need to make a living. I was already an adult, so I had a responsibility. So that's, of course, that's a factor. Like it's important to keep that in consideration when you start doing something. But like you said, it's if if you think you know before, if it's not in your heart, it's not gonna work mm -hmm. unless you just doing marketing or whatever. But you know, for what we do, which is usually crafty, it has to be, you know, yeah, it has to come from your heart. Yeah. You have to have a story that goes with it. Otherwise it's just not gonna go anywhere. That's for sure. Yeah, before I got a job doing video, there's years that I spent just going to concerts, giving free footage to bands and mm -hmm. going out and filming in nature for just a portfolio. Mm -hmm. And it's later on you find out if you stay passionate, you know, you can get jobs yeah. doing these things. But I think that's inspiring and I hope people hear that because when I see your work, it doesn't make me want to go paint, but I appreciate your work so much. Mm -hmm. I have a friend who plays professional baseball. It doesn't make me want to go play baseball, yeah. but I'm inspired by what it took to get to the level of mm -hmm. this proficiency in your craft. Yeah, I think that's important for mm -hmm. people to know. Yeah, no, that's important. Yeah. That's, that's good, yeah. Yeah. When you think about all of the things that you've done with painting or in life in general, mm -hmm. what makes you proud because you've gone through like you said times where you're just painting and you're not making money doing mm -hmm. it what are you proud to look back and reflect on when you think of particular pieces or just things that you know you've been able to do people you've been able to meet what what gives you life when you reflect on your journey mm -hmm. i mean um a lot what's the, the best thing is to realize that you know i'm able to do that every day so that I think that's the ultimate uh, uh, accomplishment is to believe that, um, not believe to realize that you know you've you've done all this and you actually are able to sustain yourself and, and make a good living of it and inspire people. Like it's a three hundred and sixty um, like accomplishment. Like I'm, I'm super yeah happy that I took all these roads and I, I've tried so many things. Um, and I'm 45 and I'm, you know, I'm there, I'm, I got a nice house. I got everything I need. Um, and I, I'm still happy to do what I do. That's it. You know, and of course there's, there's paintings I like that I've done, what I'm proud of. There's, you know, people I met, I'm super proud to be their friends and all that. But I think most of all is, yeah, being able to wake up every morning and just wondering what I'm going to paint. It's pretty good, like considering the the chaos of the world, and yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a nice place to be. Yeah. And um, and yeah, I was I was I started the the presentation. I was talking about I was talking about that idea. I was starting the presentation pretty much with that when I was saying that there's been days, you know, and especially when the pandemic hit, and you know everybody was kind of like in panic of like, what do we do? What the world's gonna be? And you know the people that come out like essentials or like worker, like, like, you know, like public workers, or doctors, like all that. And then you and artists, you're like, what am I doing? Like, am I, I'm pointless. Mm -hmm. But then you realize that you're not cause, and I've, I've realized that during the pandemic, um, during the pandemic, like I was doing this print sale in, in 2020 in June, and it was supposed to be, the height of the COVID, you know, it's June, 2020. And I was talking about my wife. I was like, do I do a, a, COVID, a print release? Cause is it like not the time? And people are going to be like, what the fuck dude? You know, we have other preoccupation. And I've done this kind of survey where I talked to my followers about it. Like, I remember I post something and, and people were like, oh, do it. Fuck yeah, do it. And guess what? It became 
the biggest sale. After that, it kept growing, but this really marked a term where it kind of stepped on like, because we sold so many prints, because of a sudden people were like, we need it. Mm -hmm. We need art. We need this in our lives. We need to put something on our wall that's going to make us dream. Yeah. And then that was a big realization where like, well, actually artists can put smile on people's faces. Mm -hmm. They can, and then we'll come back to our conversation of the beginning where, yeah, it's emotions and, and, that is essential too. I mean, yeah. doctors are essential, but emotions are essential too, especially positive emotions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, it's, uh, I, I kind of like really tapped into that and be like, I, I, this is my place in the world and I'm, that's what I do and I'm fine with that. It's gotta feel great because, you know, people need art. First of all, they need, yeah. they need that, that, that vision, that dream to, mm -hmm. to look at something mm -hmm. during happy times, difficult times. But that's got to feel great to to know that you're putting something positive out there. Yeah, you're not putting something negative out there. No, of course. It's, of course. it's you're you're a positive, nice guy, and what you're doing, it's just coming through your your image, your self image is coming through the paintings as well. Do you get inspiration here in Los Angeles still to paint? <laughs> no. Yeah. I mean, the city itself doesn't inspire me. Okay. I'm here to put my daughter in a good school, mm -hmm. do the social life. I have a lot of friends here because I was here for more than 10 years. Mm -hmm. So we have a really big group of friends. The weather is amazing, but I paint. When I'm entering the studio, I'm in another world and that studio could be anywhere. Yeah. So when people are like, well, why are you here? I'm like, I honestly don't care where yeah. I am. Um, of course, when I was in Taos, it was nice to open the door and you are in the background, you know, mm -hmm. the mountain was the one I was painting. So, but it was even sometimes distracting. Yeah. Um, but I, I go, I go back and yeah, we're talking about moving back to Arizona because it, it's good for us also to just maybe do the city a little bit for vacation or like mm -hmm. a week or two and then maybe more like be based in more like a, and Arizona is more of an in-between, you know, as places that mm -hmm. have like the, the in-between where Taos was a little too remote. So like after yeah. like two years there, I, was like, I need I need to go back to some kind of energy, like city energy, because yeah. I grew up in a city, so I'm, I'm used to that. Mm -hmm. But um, the idea is to be able to enjoy all the places because that's what inspires me is to move. Yeah. Yeah, I think. <laughs> and similarly with this van, People don't know where we are. We could be on top of a mountain. Somewhere. Exactly. We're different. in Los Angeles, <laughs> California, in Los Feliz. Yeah. But that's why I like being in here. My first night in the van ever was in Breckenridge, Colorado. Uh -huh. My second night was like at some random turnout on the side uh -huh. of the highway. And yeah. the next day was in Kingman. Yeah. You know, as long as I'm in here, you know, you can pretend you're somewhere else. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. Speaking of places too, uh, I'm in the middle of this book. Think like a horse. Have mm -hmm. you read have mm -hmm. you read it? I've read um, parts, but no, I haven't. I've been casually talking with Diamond Cross Ranch because I want to make a trip out there. Yeah, yeah. And I actually am hoping to interview Grant. Yeah, he's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So you've you've yeah, you know, yeah. I, I you photographed paint, him. Yeah. We spent a little time together. That's amazing. And yeah, he, he's a he's a hell of a guy. Yeah. What are your thoughts yeah. on Diamond Cross Ranch? It's a it's a insane place. Yeah, you really need to go. Yeah. Well, it's the you know the heritage of it and the the location. It's just so nice and their history and you know what they stand for and you know like it's kind of a time capsule pretty much of like what the west was and and they try to like of course they're developing a whole like they're using the social media smartly and it's great but when we get there you forget about all that you know and you just dive into it get on a horse and just go back to the roots <laughs> yeah yeah i i learned about it from social media yeah and of then course. i got the book and and it's like cool you're learning life lessons from mm -hmm. his work with horses yeah and then it's just an amazing place it looks yeah. like as well yeah. so i can't wait to get yeah no there. you're gonna love it yeah do you have a a favorite place like if you could just transport somewhere right now that you feel most at home whether it inspires you or you just like to be Mm. of all the places you've been oh it's hard again because there, there is places that really yeah it's it's i can't choose one yeah and if if somebody is like where do we throw your ashes i'm like i don't know mm. it'll have to be split mm. <laughs> i'm a gemini so i'm not just one <laughs> your birthday is the day after mine oh really yeah you're 15 of june <laughs> yeah amazing so yeah i i have to say um 
in the last, let's just strain in the last two years or three years, um, I'm really in love with um, Tuscany and Florence, mm -hmm. you know, because I have Italian roots. My dad's Italian. So I've spent last May, last year, I was in Florence for a month in that place. We had a, the wake up was, you know, you could see the whole city in the distance and it was just super quiet with the cypress trees. Uh, those mornings were pretty insane in terms of like inspiration. Yeah. But on the opposite, in the West, um, I have to say that places like the Grand Canyon or the Vermilion Cliffs, like how many sunrises I did at the Grand Canyon, and it's just, it's insane. Yeah. Like what it does for you to like, to seeing the lights appearing on each mesa. And, um, but even, even at our place in Taos, you know, when you look at the sacred mountain of Taos and, you know, you just, I'm a big, big sunrise guy. Like I, I wake up very early and I love to witness sunrise because I feel privileged to like, you know, see something that nobody else sees. Mm. There's a lot of people at sunset, but there's no usually nobody at sunrise. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah, Quieter. it's true, it's true. Everybody's <laughs> already there for the sunset, but sunrise is more certain people. Yeah. And uh, in general, but yeah, when you get to witness a sunrise in a beautiful place and you're alone, this is this is luxury for me. I don't need anything else. Have you gotten a chance to see it from up there at the Griffith? Yeah, we see sunrise every yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's and amazing. It's pretty nice. Yeah. yeah, I would be remiss to not ask you just thoughts on a few weeks ago, Beyond the Golden Skies, down in Arizona, your yeah, show. Yeah, it was incredible to see it from social media. But mm -hmm. what was that like for you? I mean, it's, I guess it's a life changing thing. I, I, I was not expecting this. Like I've, I've had a lot of, um, I didn't do a show for a long time. So I hadn't sailed paintings for about two years, like major paintings. That was the, that was the game. And when the gallery asked me about doing this show, it was almost three years ago. And, and, um, Brad told me, he's like, well, we know it's hard for artists because, you know, you, you gotta, pretty much hold two years work. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've done it with only two artists. Um, they were very well known and you were the youngest that we're gonna work with and um, and can you do that? And I said, well, the, luckily I have a very big print market where I, I can only leave on print sales. Like I don't need to sell paintings pretty much mm -hmm. from the past two years. Um, so I'm very fortunate with that. And so I told him, I think I can do it. I can sustain myself and you don't need to upfront me anything. I'll do the two, the two years of work and we dry the market. So that was, that was the plan. And so we did it, but I was anxious because at some point you wonder, you're like, shit, are the collectors still there? The people who want originals, are they here? You know, do they? Because it's a different market, prints and 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 originals, completely different market. Mm. Um, it's it's pretty much a pyramid, you know. And and prints, it's the bottom. Everybody can have prints, pretty much. Uh, the originals, the top of the pyramid. There's not a lot of people who can afford originals. It's mm. a certain, you know. So I was very anxious, and then the thing happened, and all the prices get like triple, quadruple, and yeah, that's crazy. So. I was like, I guess the collectors were here. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you looked so stoked. And no, I was just, videos. yeah. I mean, it's, it's insane because yeah. I had a, I had an idea in my head because we were at some point we the the galleries wanted to auction a whole show, and then I said, no, I think we just do pretty much like the biggest painting we can auction, but then the other ones is retail price, and we just do a draw. People, so that gives more you know, price range mm -hmm. and there was paintings that were, you know, lower prices and then we do the auction for, you know, the big thing and see what happened. Yeah. But I, I had an idea of what it could do. Yeah. And even even before the show, I was calling Brad and I was like, maybe the estimate on this one's too much. And he was like, no, that should be fine. You know, we should be fine. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, so, so cool. yeah, yeah, it's cool. Now, now it's like, all right, you know, when you get to there, and it's yeah. like, I don't want to go down from there. We just keep going up. Yeah. So I gotta keep, <laughs> rah, keep yeah. gearing up. I know. <laughs> oh well, you're on fire for the art. Right, it's obvious. That's so cool. Yeah, and so, it, it's infectious. And I, I can't wait for people to hear this. 
Cool. Because I usually ask people, you know, what advice do you give to people? I mean, if you have anything else to say, people just need to go back and listen to how you find your passion and how to get good at something. But I don't know if you have anything to add to that. It's that amazing. <laughs> well, I mean, no, I think we've, we've, we've covered a yeah. lot. And uh, again, it's, it's um, yeah, just take your time before you jump. You yeah. know what I mean? Take your time and, and study. And it's very important to understand a subject, whatever you're going to do in your life. Mm -hmm study before you jump because that jump's important and um so yeah either if you're young and you starting a career or whatever really make sure you you get you get the best training because that's going to make a difference in the long yeah. run you know everybody wants the big the big thing and yeah. um the more tools you have in your box the the better you're going to be in the long run yeah yeah and if they're interested truly in western painting they have to check your work out <laughs> all right <laughs> but uh what's next anything else coming up that you're excited about well i i like i said i think we're already deciding with my galleries that we're gonna do another show maybe in two or three years mm -hmm. but the the big difference the next show and i i say it and it's gonna be a tour um so we're probably gonna pick like six or seven big cities and and do like a month where we show the work in each city and we do pretty much an opening night in each city mm -hmm. and um so we can meet more people we can give more chances to the whole country to see the work and uh and maybe yeah people can you know um, meet me and and then at the end we do the final uh, with the sale and everything probably in scottsdale okay. uh, where the gallery is or in los angeles we'll see um and yeah but that's gonna be fun because then we can be in a tour bus so then i can bring back my life of being in a band back in the days to the western art and it could be so much fun because we can organize like so many things being on the road for like mm -hmm. a month and and it'll be fun so that's the project of next and that's gonna be the, the tour that's exciting yeah hey if you need a tour videographer <laughs> yeah man you're know. gonna follow us for sure <laughs> <laughs> but mark uh thanks again so much for coming on the show yeah thank you you're so inspiring you're a great guy and uh i can't just wait to see yeah. where it, where it goes next yep it's amazing man. We'll thank you here. so much all right thanks